Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to a mixed media tutorial. I have this lovely canvas. I've used the rice paper that I got from ninnysnapkins.com. There is a link and a discount code in the description box below. She also carries some of the TCW stencils. So check her out. So I'm going to use this rice paper. This is called Cosmos Owl. And these rice papers from Stamperia are absolutely lovely. They are artwork in of themselves, and it really takes a leap of courage to cut them up and break them apart to use on a mixed media or an art journal page. But you can end up with some excellent surprising results. And so take the plunge, you will be satisfied. So I'm basically cutting apart the elements of this and rearranging the composition to fit um, what how I want to use them. So I'm ripping it off, ripping pieces. I'm using some of the images, the owl I'm using pretty much as the focal image here, but I'm using some of the other elements as well as the colors that are in this rice paper as the jumping off point for the background that I'm going to create for it. So it's kind of a nice challenge, a way to challenge yourself and saying, okay, how can I duplicate the colors and the effect of this and, you know, improving the immaculate and wonderful artwork that they have. Now I want to add texture to the background. So I'm pulling, I pulled out a bunch of my stencils and I end up deciding to go with this snakeskin stencil. And it's from the Crafters Workshop and I've used it a lot for underwater. It has nice fine texture and that's what I wanted. I wanted kind of that ethereal, uh, spacey kind of look and if you didn't know that it was a snake skin stencil you wouldn't know. What I'm doing here is I'm using some gesso that has gotten thicker over time but you can use um, by extra thick gesso. You can also take modeling paste and mix it with gesso to get something in between. I didn't want a lot of texture on this, but I did want some subtleness in there. And I'm putting it on first because I want, when I mix the colors on top of this, I want to catch the colors in the gesso and un, the ungessoed parts. So you can see I've covered the entire 11 by 14 canvas with this lovely texture. Now here are the colors that I'm using. Naples Yellow, Bright Aqua Green, Prussian Blue, and Burnt Sienna. And I've pulled these colors from the rice paper itself. And you see that Burnt Sienna? Lovely. It goes so well with the aqua. I will definitely be using this knowledge that I gained in on other um, forms. So I'm mixing the paint with a little bit of water and you're just going to see me working it in with a makeup sponge with my fingers. And I'm just keeping in mind where I have the elements and where I want some of this pop of color. Now, if you don't have, I'm using Liquitex Basics or Artist Loft paint. If you don't have those, you can use whatever acrylic paint you want. And when you mix them, you're getting lots of other tones. And again, I keep looking back at that rice paper. And even though I'm getting mud here, some grays and some browns, I actually want that because that's what's in the background, those little pops of gold. Prussian blue, you know, if you know me, you know that's one of my favorite colors, but it works so well with the light bright, light aqua and that um, burnt sienna. I 
and I'm mixing it wet on wet because I want to get kind of that ethereal look and I'm testing the papers on here off and on I've decided um, what quote I wanted I picked you are your only limit I'm thinking the owl wisdom something like that and uh, this is actually going to be a gift for my nephew who is convocating from university with a degree in physics and, and astronomy. So I thought it was a very fitting piece. I'm adding some stenciling here with this round stencil and I wanted um, the round shape because there are round shapes in the parts that I'm using from the rice paper. This gets pushed way back as I progress, but you do get little hints of it. And this is a Deco Art Americana stencil. This one is another crafter's workshop. It is um, nature's circuitry. And they had that little motif that looks very chemistry scientific to me. So I'm putting that in with the burnt sienna. And I do come back afterwards and put it with some of the Prussian blue to bring it to the forefront because again, it gets pushed back over time. And you're going to see that evolve. And some of that wasn't necessarily caught on camera because it's difficult with a piece this big, it's difficult to get it on camera. And quite honestly, I was so in the flow that um, I often forgot to put the camera on. So I'm using the snakeskin stencil and I'm bringing some of the white up there. There's a lot of white in the focal parts that I'm going to put and I want to have a little bit more of that white and that contrast. I just keep playing with the elements that I have chosen and, you know, bringing them forward and then washing them and pushing them back. And that goes on quite a bit. There's a lot of give and take and it's kind of that dance that I'm doing till I get what really looks good to me. So, and I want you to know that it wasn't a very straightforward act where I instantly got the perfect background. And you can see the modeling that's on the owl and I wanted to tie that into the background. I wanted a little bit of script in there so I'm using my 5x7 gel plate to get some of that script on there. I don't want much. Again, it's all about those little bit of details, another layer, another bit of interest. I think I come back later and I do with white. Now here I am gluing the rice paper down right just with my liquid matte medium and I'm putting it right on. If I was doing this again, I would put white, which is what I, I paint behind the owl, the next two elements. This kind of blended into the background a little bit too much and I end up having to tweak it to bring it to the forefront. But again, there's nothing that you can't figure out and do. So here you see I'm taking some white paint or white gesso and I'm painting behind. Now I don't, see I don't want that white to end up being so dark. I want it to stay that color. The other way I could have done this is I could have taken the rice paper and glued it onto some white copy paper or cardstock and cut it out and then put it on. And that would have preserved the colors. But I didn't want to add the thickness of any more paper. So I did this. And now I am going to decoupage this down. And the rice paper is fairly sturdy, even when it's wet. And you can see I've been I'm able to lift it up and move it a little bit. 
without it falling apart. If you tried to do that with a napkin or even tissue paper, you I don't think you would be as successful. And there, I keep moving it. If you need any more proof. But it does go semi-transparent or translucent like the tissue paper. So it will, you will be able to see through it somewhat. So whatever colors, especially here where I have such dark colors, you are going to have to paint it out. So I have a piece here that I'm putting on the bottom to kind of ground that post that the owl is standing on. So it looks like it's behind something. Otherwise, it's just floating in midair. The um, rice paper was 11 and a half, seven, eight and a half by 11. And the canvas is 11 by 14. So I've had to stretch it out a little bit. And that's one way of doing that. So here I am colorizing it. I'm giving it a wash. I'm shading around the elements a little bit with my floating acrylic technique. And again, I apologize for the bad camera angles. It's really difficult for you to see what I'm doing, especially when I'm constantly moving it. I'm adding a little bit of shading in there just to bring out these elements and make them stand out from the background. Now you could use the Stabilo All Pencil, but that is water activated. Um, you can use charcoal here. I'm just adding a little bit more just to define it and make it stand out. And I'm using black acrylic paint and my floating acrylic technique. And you can see how that just instantly right there where I shade it, it just made that element stand out. Now, I didn't like some of the stenciling with the snakeskin stencil. It was a little too forward. So I'm making a wash of the Prussian blue mixed with the bright aqua. And I'm just brushing over it. And that's just pushing it back. Now, when I went to stamp the sentiment, I wanted to use my wooden blocks, but because I put all over texture, I, there was no way that I was going to get a clear, clean stamp. So I got out some tissue paper and I'm stamping with white acrylic paint on the white tissue paper. And I've never done this before. And I, I'm thinking, well, it should... When I decoupage this on, the white should show up. The tissue paper will go translucent and the white should show up. And that's exactly what it does. And so that's a great technique. And again, I needed to do this because I have all over texture. There was no way I was going to get a clear stamp image for these letters. So here I'm decoupaging them on and I'm putting the fluid matte medium underneath and on top. And as it soaks in, the tissue paper goes translucent. This is also great because you can stamp it out as many times as you want. If you make a mistake, you can re-stamp it without risk of ruining your project. And I want it white here because if I try, if I printed this out onto tissue paper, even with black ink from the inkjet, it would have disappeared into the background. Now, some of the tissue paper didn't quite go as translucent as I want, so I'm just mixing some of the colors on a liner brush and just going over it, mod, kind of a modeled effect, just to. Hide that tissue paper. There was a lot of touching up on this project to tweak it just to get what I wanted.
So while with a sped up vi vi video, it's it's 17 minutes. This took me, you know, over two hours of time and probably even more than that. We stop starting and thinking and figuring things out. Now, do you see the element at the top, like the astro astrology at the top? It's very faded. It doesn't stand out much at all. So here I'm taking my liner brush, thin white paint, and painting those letters to make them a little bit bolder. This is one of my favorite stencils, Ethereal, this element here. And I'm using the Crafters Workshop gold modeling paste, this champagne gold modeling paste. And I'm adding this element. And this just makes it pop. The yellow of this gold works so well with the some of the elements on the owl, the owl's eyes. And it just made it pop. I'm taking the paint and I am painting the sides kind of a model look getting you know flowing the color around the edges and here I'm edging it with black to frame the canvas as well and that just made it all work together I could have also painted the sides just completely black, but I chose to colorize them the same as the canvas in the front. So now what I've done, am I'm using the floating acrylic technique and I'm trying to bring out these lines. They had faded it because I did not put paint, a white paint underneath it. And then I come back with my liner brush and I just, I'm very carefully adding this very fine line. I do some shading acrylic on top of those um, planets as well. And this just brings, brightens this up and brings out this element a little bit more. Now, had I put the white behind it, painted that underneath all white with gesso, like I did the owl and the other element, it would have worked. Here's close-ups of the finished product. I absolutely love it. I hope you do too. Check out the affiliate links in the description box. Thank you for joining me.